Booleans can be quite awkward when it comes to getting a nice join between two objects with a clean bevel. So what you need is nice topology, but Booleans aren't the best for that. So how can we fix this and solve that problem? So in this tutorial, I'll be talking about how you can use Booleans, but still end up with clean topology so you get nice clean joins and bevels between objects. And if you like what I do, then do check out the links in the description to my courses. And you'll also find a link to my Substack on there where you can get written tutorials just like this. So I've got a new startup file here. I'm in Blender 4.4.3 and I've got my screencast keys down here. I'm going to select everything in the scene and press delete. So we've got a nice clean slate. Shift A to add, that takes me to the add menu. You can also find that up here, add, mesh, and then cylinder. Now there's a bit of debate as to how dense you want your cylinders. If we come down to the parameters down here, you can see the default is 32. Now that's a little bit high because I want to have a lower poly shape that I can add subdivision surface modifiers to and I want clean topology on that lower poly shape. You'll see what I mean more as I go along but I'm going to change this to 16. The reason I choose 16 is because it's still divisible by 4 so we can cut this in half nice and easily if we want to mirror it. So let's rotate this shape Rx 90 so it's along the bottom there. I'll scale it in the Y as well. So we've got our long shape and we're going to add one to the top here as well. But before I add one, I'm going to tab into edit mode and control R to do a loop cut and use the wheel of my mouse to create a few more. And I'll create about nine. I'll double left click and down here it says eight. I can just change this to nine. The reason I'm doing that is because I want a line down the middle because I want the edge loops to correspond to the vertices and edge loops of the new one I'm going to create above it. So I'm trying to match up the topology as best as possible. And you'll see why in just a moment. So if I go into object mode, duplicate this shape, shift D in the Z axis and move it up to somewhere around about here and RZ90 to rotate it round. And now I want to join these together. As I said before, what I'm looking for if I select both and go into edit mode so we can see the topology for both here, I'm trying to make things match up. So this point here, it would be good if it matched up with this point here. These are matching up nicely. That's not too bad. We can join these vertices together here. Here's pretty good as well. Here's good and here's good. So that's great. And this is the main aspect of the idea. You're trying to get your new object and its topology to match up with the old one as best as possible. Now it doesn't have to be perfect and I'll talk about steps to make it better if it doesn't match up but that's what you're aiming for. Now, before I do anything else, I'm going to go back to object mode. I'm going to press control A to apply the rotation and the scale. I'll just cancel that, press N on my keyboard and you can see the transforms. We've got some rotation on our objects and non-uniform scale. That can affect things like the bevel and mirrors if I try and do those in a moment. So with both of them selected, control A and apply the rotation and scale. So we've got zero rotation and one on our scale. So that's perfect. What I'm also going to do, I'll just clear the side panel with N. I'm going to duplicate these and keep them in exactly the same position. And having the originals will help us with any cleanup that we need to do of the shape if the topologies don't match up. I'll explain more about that later on. So Shift D to duplicate and left click to set them in position. So I've got two new duplicates right on top of the other ones. I'll press M and move those to a new collection and call this Originals and I'll hide those. So we'll come back to those later. This collection I'll call cool object. And this is what we'll be using to create our cool object. So I want to Boolean these two shapes together. Now I can use the Boolean modifier. So under modifiers, add modifier, type in Boolean. Now if you've not used the Boolean modifier before, then check out my tutorial, link in the description. What I'm going to do though is use what's called the bool tool add-on. It just makes the whole process much quicker. You do need to install that though. So edit, preferences, you need to go to get extensions, type in bool, and you've got bool tools there. Click on the install option. Then when you've clicked on the install option, just double check under the add-ons that the bool tool is ticked just there. Then you can close down this window and it's ready to use. I'll press N on my keyboard and go down to the edit menu here and you'll see the boolean tools just there. Like I was saying, this makes it much quicker. I can select my objects and whatever I select last, that's what we're joining to and I can just press the union option under auto boolean. So union just there, they're now joined together. So if I go into edit mode and wireframe with Alt Z, you can see it's joined them together and it's created a manifold mesh, so watertight mesh. I press Alt Z to come out of X-ray mode. Also notice there's no Boolean modifier in our modifier list. That's because it's added the modifier, applied it, and it's deleted the original shape that created the Boolean. So you can see how much faster it is. Now the other thing that's worth doing here, just so I can just work on one quarter here, 
and not work on the shape all around is to do a mirror. Now I use the auto mirror add-on. So that again, that's edit preferences under the get extensions, type in auto this time, and you'll see the auto mirror there. Make sure that's installed and double check under add-ons that it's ticked just there. And then you can close this down. Then you'll get the auto mirror here. So I want to auto mirror along the x-axis here. So that's the x-axis highlighted and in the positive, you know it's the positive by the Cartesian coordinates up here. The one with the letter is the positive and I can press auto mirror. And you can see it's cut it in half for me, deleted half the shape, added the mirror modifier and it's turned clipping on. So it's a nice simple way of doing the mirror modifier. We want one in the Y as well. Incidentally, do make sure that you have applied the rotation before doing this. Otherwise you'll get strange results because this axis here is using the local axis of your shape. Let's go for the Y now. So I'll tick Y. This time I'm choosing the negative because notice it's the negative Y. We want to keep this corner here. So the negative Y is the one we want to keep. So again, I'll auto mirror there and I've got a quarter of my shape, which is what I want to make it nice and simple. To clean things up a bit, I'm just going to close this one down. We've got two mirrors, one in the X, one in the Y. I'll close this one down and just use the X and the Y here. It's a little bit cleaner in our modifier stack. So at the moment, if I select the edges where I want to create a nice bevel and nice looking joint, I'll click on this one, control click to this one. So that selects the shortest path and I'll press control B to bevel. Now it's not doing a great job. Can you see there's some overlapping geometry? So I'll undo that and I'll press control B to bevel again and just come out a little way. It's fine if you come out a short way. In fact, it's not because there's a problem down here. So it's almost immediately overlapping itself. And that's the problem you have when you're doing booleans like this. It will join the mesh together, but you'll get vertices that are really close to each other, which will cause problems. So I'll undo that. What we have to do is tidy our mesh up. So I'll turn on the auto merge vertices option here, go into vertex mode with one. So that's vertex mode up here and just slide these together. So select this one, GG to vertex slide. When it slides together, because we've got the auto merge verts on, it will merge them and it's not moved a great distance. So it hasn't distorted our shape. This one, however, is a little bit more tricky. Let's zoom into that. I can merge this one. So GG to edge slide that. But here, if I press GG, it's moving a fair way and it might distort the shape. Let's have a look. GG to edge slide. Actually, it's okay because it's going along this edge here and that won't distort it too much. This one should be fine to move up to there. This one's fine to move down to here and there's actually two on there. So GG to vertex slide there. This one might make a little bit of a difference, but it's not distorting it too much. We're managing to keep the shape GG to edge slide there. So in fact, we've not got a lot of distortion, but there might be just a touch up here because we've moved the vertices along a fair bit and possibly just changed the roundness of these cylinders, but only very, very slightly. I'll just zoom in and make sure that they are joined together, these ones here. So I'll press M to merge by distance. Yes, they are joined together. Just looks a little bit like there's an extra vert there. So now if I go into edge mode, I can select the edges from here up to here and I can bevel them. So control B to bevel and you can see I've not got any problems this time with my bevel. So I can bring it out, maybe do an extra cut in there like so. And now I've got nice clean topology that I can add my subdivision surface modifier to. I can't do it just yet. I'll just go back into edit mode and select these edge loops here and here and bevel those. Otherwise we'll get all sorts of distortion at the end. So control B to bevel bring those out and then add my subdivision surface modifier. So into object mode, the shortcut key is control three and you can see it adding one there. And we've got this nice clean shape with a nice clean bevel. I right click shade smooth and that looks fantastic. Now, if your shape distorts at all, I'll just minimize my modifier. You can use the originals and shrink wrap to them. We don't seem to have a lot of distortion, so it's not a huge problem, but let's create a bit of distortion. Let's uh, move these ones up, for example. So G then Z. Okay, so there's a tiny bit of distortion there. In fact, I'll go a little bit further than that. G then Z, move those up a bit further. It's hard to see. It's surprising how far you can go before there's too much distortion, but you can see a little bit of a lump there. So what I need to do is bring back my originals. I'll hide my cool object first, bring back the originals, and let's make these high poly with the subdivision surface modifier. So I can select one and control three to add my subdivision surface modifier. Oh, I've just got to bevel the end. So just go into the end, control B to bevel. I need to do the other end because it's not mirrored. So select the other end, control B to bevel. Do the same for the bottom one. Select both ends, control B to bevel. And again, control three for a subdivision surface modifier. Then I'm going to Boolean them both together. So I select them both and use the union Boolean there. So we've got this, but we haven't got that nice bevel and we won't be able to because the topology is really bad through here. But we've already got that with our cool object just here. But our cool object, 
if I just hide my originals, might have a little bit of distortion. Well, I'll bring my originals back. And with my cool object selected, this one here, I'm going to add in a shrink wrap modifier. So shrink, choose the shrink wrap. The target is the original. So it's using the original shape. So it's sticking to the original shape. And if I hide the originals, you can see my new object just here. And there's a bit of distortion in here. It doesn't look super amazing. But if I bring my shrink wrap above the subdivision surface modifier, it's now pushing my mesh onto the original and then doing the subdivision surface modifier. And I can use snapping as well to snap to the original if I bring the original mesh back. If the shrink wrap is shrink wrapping to the wrong part, I can turn on snapping and snap to faces, select my vertices and then press G to grab to move them into position and shrink wrap them to the original. I'll hide the original for now and then you can see the results there. And you can then use the originals as the guide for your topology position. So there we have it, that's how we can create Boolean objects but have nice topology. So we correct the topology but we keep the originals so we can shrink wrap to them if we need to fix the shape. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.